FBI die on November 5th? I think it certainly did, and you're already seeing some of the consequences of this in the private sector where several companies are sort of rolling out these plans to roll back their own DEI initiatives that they've set in place over the past few years. But of course, I think it's going to be much more difficult to tackle DEI at the root than these companies and even some Republicans may expect. And that's because this is a big money-making racket, Todd. One Harvard professor estimates that U.S. companies spend about $8 billion per year on diversity trainings alone. That does not include the very profitable DEI consultants who can charge up to six figures for their work when they go into some of these corporations. And then, of course, there is the other issue, which is that even if you get rid of DEI initiatives in some of these private companies, and even at the federal government level, you still have not tackled the root of the issue, which is higher education. These ideas did not come from nowhere. They need to be torn out root and branch from our colleges and our universities, which, by the way, are also funded by our taxpayer dollars. I interesting analysis here from the executive director of Consumers Research says the following, if you wouldn't go along with DEI regime under the Biden administration, they were threatening to sue you or claim that you're violating civil rights of minorities. So it was more a combination of the threat of bad press or government action against these corporations. It would follow to me that if there's no longer that threat of bad press or government action, that DEI would stop. But you're saying, if I'm listening to you correctly, that the DEI industrial complex might be too strong for this thing to go away with the snap of a finger, Caleb. Well, and part of its strength is the tactic that we just watched, the bullying, the intimidation, the suggestion that anyone who opposes DEI is racist or is discriminatory or is oppressive. And this is where we need to reframe the conversation. Anti-DEI initiatives are not anti-DEI. They are pro-merit pro-equality and pro-common sense. And by the way, they're also something that a vast majority of Americans, they want DEI dead. 66% of Americans, including 54% of Democrats, said in a poll earlier this year that they do not want their companies making hiring decisions based on race or sex or some other immutable characteristic. So all of these companies, higher education, everyone needs to get in line and fall into the will of the American people on this issue. So why did Democrats lose? California Senator-elect Adam Schiff said everybody's to blame, the entire Democrat Party to blame for Harris's loss. Listen. Look, I think uh, the entire Democratic Party bears responsibility, myself included, and the former president, and the, uh, uh, mounted a, an effective campaign, and you have to give him credit for that. But I do think the you know Democratic Party has to recognize the challenge we have, which is for too many millions of uh, battleground voters, working people, they don't think we represent them, uh, and we have to make that case anew. I would argue they don't think you represent them because you don't anymore. Final thoughts to you, Kaylee. Well, if Adam Schiff has suddenly had this awakening, one way to tell whether it's genuine is if he starts governing from the center in his own state of California. And he could start by challenging his own governor, Gavin Newsom, who now wants California to become the center of resistance to the incoming Trump administration. California is a big part of the problem. California policies, which are generally dictated by the progressive movement, were thoroughly rejected by the American public. So if Adam Schiff really wants to take that look in the mirror, he's got to start with his own home state. Kaylee McGee-White, have a great Thanksgiving week. We appreciate it.